Hello again and welcome back to my playthrough of Starfield Mental Fox here. Thanks for joining me again. We're sitting on a bench next to Janet Yang here. Oh, check it out. You can look at her uh, little tablet she's looking at. Huh. That's pretty cool. She's asked us to uh, deliver a message to her sister here. It's this dear sister quest. Janet asked me to deliver a letter to her sister, Julia. I should bring it to her. Well, we will. But first, we have some special sauce to deliver. Old Luther at the Chunks on New Homestead asked us to travel to New Atlantis to pick up some special sauce. I got the special sauce from the other Chunks. I need to bring that back to Luther. That's what we're going to do. We're going to stand up here. We're going to walk over to our ship. And we're going to fly back to New Horizon. New Homestead, I mean, not New Horizon. Ever heard one of them say that before? That was somewhat entertaining. Walk over to our beautiful ship here. So, for as big of a city that New Atlantis is supposed to be, it seems like the spaceport would be a lot bigger, or there'd be more of them. Yep. But this is what we get. Oh, he has something for us. That's great. What do you got, Barrett? Hey, Captain. Need do you have anything? something for me? Yeah, I do. How did you know? Well, you remind me every five minutes. Alien scramble added. Thanks. All right. Let's uh, have a seat. Take off. Time to leave this place behind. See if I could figure out how to get to New Homestead. It's gonna be in Seoul, right? Whoops. Go to our star map. Back away from here. And here's good old Seoul. Okay, Seoul and uh, Jupiter. Titan is a moon of Saturn. So here it is. New homestead. Let's land. Alright. Make this brisk walk over here. To this structure. Huh, new homestead established 2122. Do we know what New Homestead was initially? I mean, they're so focused on all this history, I don't even think I know the actual history of New Homestead. It was probably told to me before, or I read it somewhere, but I have since forgotten. But I am interested. Maybe we will um, see if we can't find an answer to that after we deliver this secret sauce. Like, I don't think I've ever walked down there. There's still more of New Homestead to explore. And we're here, so why not explore it? Chunks. Clean up your mess, dude. I still can't believe people actually live like this. Careful out there. Some wacko is running around in an <laughs> obviously fake monster costume trying to scare people. What are you eating? That's not Chunks. It's so cold here. I guess I should have expected that. Hey, good to see you again. About that sauce. Yeah, what about it, Luther Atlanta? 
Yeah, I want to notice Welcome other people's chunks. last names too. Please choose your chunks. Ooh, here's the bathroom. Oh, we can go in. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm so excited that it's an actual functioning door. Oh, you've got your sink, you've got your mirror, you've got your toilet. All the comforts of home. Hey, you're back. I, um, uh, people are getting antsy for special sauce. You got it? Yeah, man. I got the Chunks special sauce for you. Oh, and just in time, too. I'm practically salivating just thinking about that sauce. Man, you really saved my butt. Corporate's gonna see just how much this place is gonna turn around. Thanks again. 2100 credits. Oh, we got a Chunks egg. You know what? I didn't even look at the Chunks special sauce, doggone it. Mmm, that's, uh, that's unlike me. Let's talk to him again. Welcome to Chunks. Oh. What can I get for you? Nothing. Have a great day. Okay, let's see who else is here. We've Seems got like Citizen. Luther's forgetting his heritage ever since he got a job here. He's forgetting his heritage ever since he got a job I here? I can't imagine living here. These people sure are hardy. This garden is a lot smaller than I thought it would be. They look so excited to be here. Let's see what's down here. So we do have some history exhibits. Uh, here we've we got a museum a display. Life on New Homestead, hmm. but make no mistake, it's fulfilling. So Maurice Lyon, I guess he's from France, right? Lyon, France. I hope I'm right about that. Uh, let's read the display. Uh, antique Earth media, assorted Earth media, clockwise from bottom left. Book, Tales from Space and Time, H. G. Wells, 1899. Book on the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin, 1859. Book Frankenstein, Mary Shelley, 1818. Portable Compact Disc Player, boy, that's quite a leap, from the 1800s to 1993. Book Sailing Alone Around the World, Joshua Slocum, 1900, and a videotape from 1976. I mean, that's pretty old videotape. Uh, is it? Is it beta? I don't know. Hey, uh, Maurice. Hello there. Are you here to peruse our little museum exhibit? I guess. Um, you know, you can't just put crappy old junk in a display and call it a museum. I know. These trinkets may not look like they hold a lot of value, but they're the last of their kind. They represent humanity's last ties to Earth. There will never be anything quite like them ever again. Not since we all left. But I can't expect everyone to respect that as much as I do. If you have any questions about the exhibit or New Homestead, I'm happy to answer as best as I can. Yeah, let me ask you this. Um, how is it that we're allowed... I'm not allowed. We're able to have a uh, settlement here on this frozen rock of a moon, yet Earth is completely abandoned. Why can't we just build something like this on Earth and continue to live there? I don't think we can ask him that, though. What can you tell me about how New Homestead came to be? Here we go. This is what I want to know. It's an interesting story. New Homestead began as a scientific research base called the Titan Astrobase, back when space travel was in its infancy. The hope was that humanity would be able to discover simple alien life here given the moon's composition and water supply. When that ultimately failed, it was repurposed as a colony research base where Scientists and engineers studied how to build colonies on inhospitable worlds. Then, finally, when gravity drives were commonplace and we started finding Earth-like planets, New Homestead was born as a living history community to preserve that past. Okay. Um, well, changing the subject, everyone here has such interesting family names. What's the deal with that? When our early colonists learned of Earth's demise, they decided to take on the names of their cities of origin 
as a way to remember their heritage. Now, some may have been lost in translation over the years, and some may have taken it more seriously than others, but the names are mostly accurate. For instance, my family mm. comes from the city of Lyon, in a country that was called France. Okay. Uh, I apologize. Could you speak up? <laughs> um, so I was right about Leon being in France. Yay me. Well, uh, who are you and what do you do around here? I am Maurice Leon. And I am the community elder. As wow. the oldest living citizen at 96, my only job is to keep Earth history alive. I tell stories to the young people and the visitors from other worlds. Although my memory isn't what it used to be, I try my best to get the stories right. Well, I hope I look that good at 96. Can you tell me a story about Earth? Sure, I'd love to. There was once a war so big that they say all of the world was involved. This was actually the second time it happened. They fought because a terrible man named Hitler rose to power and slaughtered many innocents. Millions were lost. Even the colony war pales in comparison. Mm, gosh, do you have any more Earth stories? Maybe a happy one? Why, certainly. It's what I do. There was a time when huge monstrosities called dinosaurs ruled over Earth, long before humans existed. They were similar to some of the larger life forms you might see elsewhere in the settled systems. Their reign ended when a... Uh, I can never remember if it was a comet, an asteroid, or a meteor that hit the Earth. Whatever it was, it nearly wiped out most of the life at that time. Hmm. Do you have time to tell another story? Hmm. Let me think of a good one. A long time ago, thousands of years, humans built a wall so large, it spanned the northern length of one of Earth's largest empires, China. They called it the Great Wall of China, and it was meant to keep out invading hordes. If I recall correctly, it didn't always work as well as they had hoped. I'll have to look it up again. Memory's not what it once was. Oh, no more Earth stories? Oh, well. Um, can you tell me more about the exhibit? Of course, certainly. We have several items in our collection that we rotate in and out over time, but they all originate from the same place, Earth. We have everything from toys to antique technology to sports memorabilia. We even used to have an old Earth vehicle, but we had to sell it when we ran out of space for it. Most of our collection was donated by fellow Earth enthusiasts and historians who felt it belonged close to the homeland here in the Soul System. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that all? Oh, well, that's all. Take care. Well, thanks, Maurice. Here's another plaque. Antique instrument. Antique instrument of unknown origin Earth. Believed to be of West African origin, possibly a type of ngoni, a harp-like string instrument traditionally used in ceremonies accompanied with chanting and storytelling. This instrument was generously donated to the new Homestead Museum, but its true origin is unfortunately lost to time. Check it out. There it is. Pretty cool. Here we've got... Um... I guess these are books, maybe. Yeah, there's the there are videotape. I envy those who are able to travel like you. 
And that is a VHS tape, not a beta tape. And then there is the portable compact disc player. Here we have an old computer. Antique computers. A range of antique earth computers ranging from the late 1980s to the mid 2000s. Computers have existed in some form since Charles Babbage's difference engine in 1822. The years from the mid 20th century into the earliest early 21st century were known for some of the greatest advances in computing technology as computers shrank from gigantic room-sized devices filled with vacuum tubes to small boxes filled with microprocessors like the ones you see here. Ones? I only see one. Oh, okay, I guess they've got these towers here too. That's, that's, that's their collection. Just some, just an old iMac looking thing and some generic towers. Here we've got... Did you see those wind turbines out there? Hoo-hee! Yeah, I saw them. Got a real good look at them. Earth animals. Commercial reproductions of Earth fauna. Throughout human history, replicas of Earth animals were used in many different ways, from toys and games to more practical uses such as these items. Piggy bank left. As far back as the 15th century, hollowed out ceramic statue of the animal known as pig were popularly used to store physical currency. Decoy duck, right. Waterfowl known as ducks were once, hunt once hunted near Earth's marshes for sport and food using ballistic rifles. To facilitate this activity, hunters would often place wooden decoy du ducks in the water and use a small woodwind instrument <laughs> to produce an accompanying call resembling that of the duck in order to lure it in. Piggy bank. Decoy duck. Feel free to look around, but don't touch. All right. Here is a hockey stick. Championship ice hockey stick. Ice hockey stick used on Earth in the city of Edmonton, Canada during a 1988 championship game. Ice hockey is a contact sport played on an ice rink where two teams with five players and two goaltenders called goalies compete to deposit a rubberized puck in the other team's goal. The players traverse the rink on specialized shoes mounted on thin metal blades called ice skates and manipulate the puck with specialized curved sticks such as the one displayed here. It's been a while since I last visited. Nice to see this place still has the same charm. Mm -hmm. RV Calypso. Scale model of the RV Calypso. Originally commissioned by the British Royal Navy as a minesweeper vessel and launched in 1942, it was later repurposed by famed Earth oceanographic researcher Jacques Cousteau in 1950. Cousteau dedicated his life to exploring Earth's oceans further and deeper than anyone before him. During his expeditions, he formed a deeper understanding of the sea's fragile ecosystems and became an advocate for ocean preservation. Uh, it doesn't mention that this is a model. <laughs> he might be led to believe that that is actual size and that Jacques Cousteau was a very, very tiny man. Brown Horse Tavern back there. Let's look at more uh, museum displays. Here is the HMS Beagle. There, this one actually says scale model of the HMS Beagle. Originally constructed for the British Navy as a war vessel and first launched in 1920. This Cherokee class brig sloop was most famous for transporting renowned scientist Charles Darwin during his famous worldwide research voyage in 1831 to 1836. This one didn't say scale model, did it? Oh, it does, my bad. Scale model, my bad. Forget everything I said before. Here is some space stuff. NASA. NASA, one of several Earth-based space agencies, was instrumental in humankind's earliest journeys into space. Indeed, it was due to the efforts of NASA that New Homestead exists. 
In 2107, NASA sent an unmanned probe to Titan, which paved the way for the development of the, Ast the Titan Astrobase, completed in 2130. By 2185, the Titan Astrobase project was transitioned into the colony of New Homestead. From left to right, NASA prototype rocket, NASA branded MUG, Vostok 1 USSR space program, Space Shuttle Discovery, Apollo 11, Collectible Snow Globes. Items on loan from NASA. Tiny little displays. Over here. Miscellaneous Earth knickknacks. From left to right, unknown decorative liquor bottle brought from Earth to New Homestead during its original mission. Electronic pipes used to inhale various legal substances during early New Homestead colonial times. Equinoctial dial? Equinoctial? I don't know. Uh, Equinoctial dial brought to New Homestead by one of the original settlers as a family heirloom. Original construction, 1800. Or circa 1800. Uh, and then scroll case of unknown date and origin believed to have been a sacred relic. This old scroll case likely predates any other synthetic item in the museum. The scroll itself has been lost to time. Okay. Over here, got some rocks. Meteorites, natural space debris like asteroids and meteoroids routinely enters planetary or moon at atmospheres to impact the surface below. When a meteor survives its journey through the atmosphere and makes impact, the result is a meteorite, such as the ones seen in these display cases. Displayed to the left, polished and rounded piece of the Gibeon meteorite, which impacted Earth around 600 million years ago. Displayed ahead from left to right, carbonaceous chondrite meteorite which impacted titan about 250 million years ago piece of the dronino meteorite which is believed to have have impacted earth more than 1200 years ago Neat. come to new homestead for the history stay for the quaint charm. Well, here we've got a brochure rough draft. Let's check it out. Star Sap Tours. Visit historical New Homestead and take a comprehensive, genuine Star Sap Tour. Learn about the early days of humanity's ventures into space. See how people lived in the colonies of yore. Speak and interact with traditional Titan citizens experiencing early colony life. Explore the frozen surface of Titan. How can I resist? Well, you don't have a lot of money. You know I'll always take care of you. I bought something off a of tourist real cheap. I think you're gonna like it. I'll drop by with it later, after I clean it up. Wow. Thank you, Jay. I don't know what to say. Don't worry about it. You just keep on being you. Mm. Not sure what's going on in there, but we'll check it out here in a bit. Mm. We've spoken with her. Oh, it's a citizen. I wonder how they can live anywhere else. It's a little weird that people come here to see what early colony life was like. To me, it's just how we live. Yeah, just how you live, huh? Do All you right, want to know what life was like for the early colonists? Star Sap Tours was voted what? best Don't historic be... tour oh. three years in a row. Like, what's the big deal? It's just another dead world. Let's speak with Bar Bill. As soon as these people stop talking. I don't like it when I'm trying to talk to somebody and somebody else is talking in my ear. And the unimaginable history. Why is this on the ground? I cannot overstate how important. Yeah, we already heard those two talk. All of humanity. All right, let's try hey there. this. Hope you brought a healthy thirst for history. All right, Bill. Why, hello there! I'm Bill Starsap of Starsap Tours. Let me tell you, this place is full of history and interesting facts. For instance, did you know that New Homestead was one of the first colonies established outside of Earth? 
It's been populated in some capacity for over 200 years. Cool. Of course, everyone knows that. Or, I'm not really interested in history. We could say, that's interesting. I'd love to know more about New Homestead. Or, that's incredible. I had no idea. Well, believe it or not, I would like to know more about New Homestead. Well, there's plenty more where that came from if you're interested in taking one of my famous tours. So what do you say? I've got an opening. I could take you on a tour right now if you'd like. Hmm. Ooh. Mm, let's see here. We could say, um, what do you recommend seeing while I'm here? Anything to avoid? Definitely check out the Brown Horse Tavern. Good food, great atmosphere. Avoid spending too much time outdoors. It's freezing out there. <laughs> Any more than that, and well, I'd be giving away the tour for free. <laughs> Why would someone want a tour of New Homestead? Why would I want a tour of New Homestead, he says. Well, let me tell you, New Homestead is living history. These people are direct descendants of some of the first settlers to leave Earth. If you've ever wanted to know what that early colonial life was like, this is your chance to embark on a fun-filled exhibition unlike any other. I see, I see. Uh, listen, no offense, but Star Sap is an unusual name. Sounds almost made up, isn't it? <laughs> None taken. I get it all the time. If you think it sounds made up, well, that's because it is. I come from an eccentric family. Back in the early days of space travel, generations ago, my ancestors were really into science fiction. They wanted a name that seemed like it fit into the stories they grew up with, so they changed their last name, and the Star Sap family name was born. Used to be Bramblefoot before that. Their ancestors liked a different type of fiction. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, you know what? I would like to go on a tour of New Homestead. Excellent! You won't regret it! My tours are one of a kind! <laughs> now, there's just the matter of price. The going rate for a genuine Star Sap tour is only 100 credits. Hmm. Well, I don't know, man. I'd like to, but that's more than I was hoping to spend. Ah, well... <laughs> 100 credits is very reasonable, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, you kind of pulled a bait and switch on me, did he? I don't know. I assure you it wasn't intentional. I, I, I really should have been upfront about the price. I thought maybe you saw one of the flyers. Maybe I could do something for you. Oh, yeah? Um, I mean... I mean, I'm sure your tour is great, but you haven't really sold me on it. I know, I know, I gotta work on my pitch a little. Maybe I could give you a discount just this once to prove my tour is worth it. Tell you what, I like you. Oh, this wow. one's on the house, but if you enjoy the tour, I'd really appreciate if you'd tell all your friends about me when it's done. So let's get this show on the road, eh? Nice. All right, so this is New Homestead's main concourse. This underground area didn't exist when the original outpost, titled Castro Base, was finished in 2130. Follow me. We'll come back here by the end of the tour and talk about the museum collection. But first, let's go see where people live. Cool. Now, so we're doing a quest here now called Star Sap Tours. I decided to take a tour of New Homestead with Bill Star Sap so I can learn more about its history. Remember, these people aren't actors. They actually live here, so try to be respectful of that. While the original inhabitants of the Titan Astro Base lived in pods like you saw up above, they transitioned down here when this section of the base was finished in 2144. Space is extremely limited, so you'll notice some overflow here, kind of but more residences also exist but on lower levels, which are inaccessible to tours. Course. I'll stop at each of our destinations if you want to look around, or if you have any questions for me. Okay, speak with Bill. So now... Uh-huh. Okay. So he's stopping here, where there's a child. That's way more awesome wherever you come from than it is here. And, um, yeah, okay. Sure, Bill. 
Let's go. Have any questions so far? Well, um, how many people live here? I'm not sure the exact count, but New Homestead is a fairly small colony. What you see is what you get for the most part, except for some other people who live in the private lower levels. Some, particularly security, and yours truly, even commute from other worlds. Really? Can you tell me more about how people lived here before this was all built? The original Titan Astro Base had more habitation pods on the surface connected to some of the old structures you may have seen in the back. As the colony grew, the base was expanded underground, and those hab units were recycled into materials used down here. Hmm, interesting. Um, the overflow area looks cramped. What's with that? Sadly, it's difficult to get additional construction done inside these underground caverns. So for now, additional populations are housed in these stacks of old shipping crates. As you might expect, this is where some of the less wealthy can afford to live. It's not glamorous, but they are functional and cozy. Uh -huh. I'd like to check this out in more detail. Oh, sure, I'll be here waiting. <laughs> the locals love to talk with tourists, but they'll let you know if they're busy. So please respect them. Okay, so we could walk around and talk to people, and he'll wait for us. We'll go here in the lounge. Nobody in here. And, uh, can't say there's really anything too interesting in here. Nothing I'm interested in, in anyway. Here is, uh, the clinic. And we came here before and we spoke with her. What can I do for you? She's the one who had us put on the f costume and scare people away. The kid. Ah! I'm some so much energy! I want to run around! <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know where he's going to take us next. Bathroom. see if anybody's in the bathroom. Nope. 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 What you doing? New Homestead is a living history exhibit, but these are real people, so please be kind to them. Okay. Uh, elevator. Alright. This would take us to the surface. Here we've got Hi there. Citizen. Always nice to see a new face. You get used to the methane processing smell after a while. Mm, I could really go for some of Anya's cooking over the brown horse. Those folks in Sidonia may be closer to Earth, but we do a better job preserving its traditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't mind the tourists. They help the local economy. Lots of history here, if you're into that sort of thing. We used to get more tourists than we do these days. Oh, yeah. If you need medical attention, see Dr. Lakota. But a word of warning, she really doesn't care for tourists. Mm. Sure would be nice to get off world sometime. Do you have a spaceship? I want to get a spaceship, but I'm older. They're so cool. Mm -hmm. Off worlders always ask how I can live here. I wonder how they can live anywhere else. I could really go for some of Anya's cooking over at the Brown Horse. Sure Hi there. Nice Always nice seeing a new face. Sometime. Sweet two. Just go into somebody's house. No big deal. It's all part of the tour. Got anything cool in your locker? Mm. Old Earth baseball. Raisin Bran cereal. Centauri Mills Raisin Bran cereal. A breakfast classic. Meal tray lid. Always looking to see if there's anything interesting. I'm not really looking to steal anything. Here we go. Letter to the school board. To whom it may concern. My, my daughter Sylvie is part of the UC Remote World Learning Program. In this month's study kit, she was assigned a book titled The Hills Cry Jemison. As I do all books assigned to her, I took to reading it first to judge suitability for my daughter. How do you get off giving her this garbage to read? 
Her assigned learning counselor tells us it's really about building friendships, learning to tolerate others' differences, and overcoming adversity. That's all fine and good. Those are important lessons, but I see it for what it is, nothing but propaganda promoting your planet. My daughter is a proud new homesteader, and I see to it she remains that way. I don't want her getting silly ideas in her head about picking up from her home and family and moving to your consumer wasteland of a world. Sylvie will not be reading this book. I want my daughter to learn, but if you keep sending her material that pushes her away from me, I'll have no choice but to homeschool her, which places a huge burden on my family due to our farming responsibilities. Please reconsider the reading material that you send our way. Nathaniel Manila. <laughs> Tough luck, Nathaniel Manila. Tough luck. Alright, that's somewhat interesting. Let's see what's in this suite. Uh, Fields of Everglass. I'm not familiar with this book. An excerpt from the highly acclaimed novel Fields of Everglass, set in the near future during a fictional wartime era. And yet, Talat did not back down. No, sir. I won't fire on them. Regardless of what you say they did, those soldiers were once like us. They're our family. We have no reason to fight them. This impressed Florence. Was Talat really willing to put everything on the line just to protect her compatriots? She knew the war was ridiculous, but to see him face his commander now and absolutely refuse a direct order, knowing that it could amount to treason, this was the same Talat who no more than a week ago had carried out an order to ambush and lock up her entire squad. She knew there was a gentleness to the man, but until now she had not been able to know for sure just how reasonable he could be. You're out of line, soldier. You want to think about what you're doing and run that by me one more time? Commander Greason barked. Spittle flew. His face was turning bright red with anger. Greason was not accustomed to disobedience. You heard me, I'm not repeating myself. Talat looked over to Florence. He knew the gravity of the situation, but she had taught him so much about this unjust war in their few short days together that in this moment, he decided even if it cost him gravely, he would do the right thing. As he noticed the other officers begin to shuffle uncomfortably, noting a break in the resolve, a smirk crossed his face. The cracks began to show. He knew the tide was about to turn, and that his small act of defiance could be the one to usher in the end of this foolish conflict. Yeah. I have to read the rest of that later, when I'm in my own suite. Boy, this place is really depressing. <laughs> Hang up a poster or something, jeez. Alright, let's go back to Bill and continue the tour. Well, let's talk to the kid. <laughs> You'll never catch me. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, Bill. Have any questions so far? Uh, you know, I think I'm uh, ready for whatever's next. All righty. We'll be taking the residential elevator to the farms area on the surface level. This way, please. Let's leave these good people alone for now and go oh, check so out the cool farms. There. Follow me up the elevator. <laughs> I didn't get to check out storage. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back. To the surface. Okay. Cool. New Homestead's farms are the beating heart of the colony. Without them, the original outpost would have shriveled and died. These pods are sealed and climate controlled, a perfect environment for growing the hydroponic vegetation needed for survival in the early days of the colony. Papa, you're always talking about how important it is to preserve our traditions. Why do we have to farm? How is that part of our tradition? Well, we used to get well, more tourists we can than farm we do these because days. we used to grow food, and that's what our ancestors did on Earth. But didn't they have big open fields and giant machines? We don't have any of that. She makes a good point, dear. Uh, it's because we have a much smaller space to work with. So then, it's not really the same, is it? How is it a 
their tradition if it's not the same thing as they do. Why is it important that we preserve it? I don't know. It just is. No, we don't want to fall behind our work, so let's get back to it, okay, kiddo? Okay, fine. So yeah, here we've got if you'll Nathaniel. Me, I'm not in the mood to talk. And Sylvie, and we just read his letter to the school board about the book he is refusing to allow his daughter to read. Yeah, let's uh, let's go talk to his daughter. There's nothing creepy about that. I've heard about lots of other planets out there. Some of them sound pretty scary, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who told you that? Your dad. Hello. I'm not really supposed to talk with tourists, but I kind of want to anyway. And I don't think my papa is paying attention. <laughs> You're not going to tell him, are you? Oh, no. This is our little secret. Uh, sorry, kid. Now I feel like I have to tell him, or maybe we should respect your parents' wishes, or I don't think I will, not unless he asks, or no, not if you don't want me to. Pfft, screw that guy. No, not if you don't want me to. <laughs> oh, thank you. I promise it'll be fun. I like talking to tourists. I get to learn so much about everywhere else, and they get to learn about here. Hmm. Now what should we talk about? Uh, do you enjoy working on the farm? I think it's pretty fun. And I get to be around my mama and my papa all day, so that's cool. They say we all have to work a little. Because it takes all of us to make the community work. Just like on Earth a really, really, really long time ago. Someday, I think it'd be cool to see other places and do other things. But this is fine for now. I see. Are there a lot of other kids on New Homestead? Not really. There's some, though. Most are around my age. We all go to school in the same room. I see, I see. Um, is school here the same as other schools in the settled systems? I don't... Mm, I don't know. I've never been to any other schools. We mostly learn about the history of the soul system and Earth and stuff like that. Until we get old enough to go on our learning vacation. That's when we get to leave to go to school somewhere else for a few years. Or travel and visit other worlds, try out jobs and stuff. Oh, I can't wait. Mm-hmm. So why doesn't your dad want you talking to tourists? My mama says it's because he thinks we'd up and leave if we found out about the rest of the worlds out there. But I keep telling him, I love it here. And I love him. And I would never leave him. He doesn't believe it. He says the kids almost always want to leave when they grow up. But not me. Nope. I just want to visit somewhere else. Maybe. Okay, nice talking to you. Let me know if you have any other questions. Okay. Let's see, got some tools here. Nice view of the um, fields. Who else is in here? I think we saw both her mom and her dad. As a citizen. Running Here's her mom. this farm with my family for the sake of our little colony is one of the greatest pleasures in life. Yeah. Thanks again for taking the time to answer questions for me. I learned a lot from you. I answered questions for her? It'd be nice to get away for a while, but it's difficult. People rely on the farm. Hello. Don't mind me. I love talking with off-worlders like you. Okay. All right. No disrespect, but I'd appreciate if you let me and my family be. Oh, yeah? Let's have a little chat, Nathaniel. We get a lot of tourists out this way, but most of them aren't so bold as to strike up conversations with us. What's your deal? It's my deal? Um, you know, I'm just interested in how cultivation works on this planet. Hmm. You seem genuine enough. So what can I do for you? Well, what kind of challenges do you face farming on Titan? From what I know about farming elsewhere, it's largely the same. Big difference is that we need to import or make our own soil. And we need to be extra careful with our temperature control. Titan's surface is frozen, and it's not much better just below it with the ice caves. Then it's just a matter of artificial sunlight and supplying CO2 for the crops. It's not too challenging. I see. What can you tell me about your farm? Well, for one, it's my wife Mara's farm. I just had the good fortune of marrying into it. 
It's been in her family for generations. We're the best source of fresh produce in the colony. Not like that processed junk we get from off-world, and certainly nothing like that eyesore chunks. Well, I just wanted to chat for a little. Thanks for your time. No worries. You have yourself a day now. Uh, have yourself a day, huh? Okay. That's probably where the tour will take us next. I could be wrong. This is the room that I believe we were in just a moment ago. I mean, I don't really see any fruits or vegetables growing. You get used to the methane processing smell after a while. All right, Bill. Any questions about the farms? Yeah. How is this different than anywhere else in the galaxy? Good question. It's largely the same, because this was the colony that pioneered the techniques you see elsewhere. But you'll notice that the farms here are smaller and staffed by humans, not robots. Things here are a little more old-fashioned compared to some of the large factory farms you'll find elsewhere in the settled systems. What do they grow here? These days, it's a mix of what you find elsewhere in the galaxy, but in the olden days, it was all brought over from Earth. It was a lot of hearty root vegetables like potatoes, carrots, beets, and such, supplemented with corn, peas, green beans, soy, etc., which didn't always grow as well. Are the farms still operational? Oh, they are indeed. Colonists still cultivate plant-based food for their own consumption here in New Homestead. It's less vital to their survival these days, as they also import supplemental food from other colonies, including meats, dairy, and synthetics. However, most citizens here take pride in a new homestead-grown, sustainable diet. Nice. I'm going to take a little look around. By all means, go right ahead. Uh, feel free to talk to the farmers, but I ask you respect their privacy and, and don't bother them too much. <laughs> After all, they are on the job. Come back and let me know when you're ready to move on. I will, but it's going to be a little bit of a wait, Bill, because it is time for me to end this episode. I'm going to hang out here with the plants, enjoy the view. And when we come back next time, we'll continue on with the tour See what else uh, old Bill has to show us. We'll explore more of New Homestead. And um, if we don't find anything else to do here on New Homestead, perhaps we'll go back to Paradiso and deliver this letter to Julia for Janet. That's what we have to look forward to. As always, I thank you for joining me on this episode. I sure hope you had a good time. If you did, why don't you let me know? If you can do that by leaving a like or a comment. Thanks for watching. I sure hope you join me again in the next episode.